Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back Framework Fortune community. I'm your host Ben and we've got our co-host h and Trader Hal in the house tonight. How's it going tonight? Going good. Uh, another day. Another day to trade. TCAT took the show. Yeah, TCAT was definitely a interesting runner that we're going to jump into. But it's time for the last rip. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into the SPY which is very interesting today because I don't remember there ever being an actual doji star. If there was, it's a very rare occurrence on something like the SPY. And that's how it closed today. Way above the 10-day moving average by about $4. We just bounced after that little shakeout we had. And it looks like this is going to be a trend reversal, and we're probably going to come back down. This is an ugly way to close. And if you look at the QQQ, it has a green similar candle, but not a doji. But still, way off of the indicators, just getting smushed from selling pressure. And then we flip to the DIA. It is in that downtrend, that downtrend I was talking about that could be possibly starting, confirmed with today's close. And it was red on the close. So we got a little bit of mixed movement between those three ETFs, but the bottom line is they all look like they're about to take a turn tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But we've seen over the last couple of weeks, we are talking about it before... We started recording how we're seeing a lot of stocks just dumping during the day. We're, we're, we may get a few little float runners here and there, but overall it seems like a lot of stocks are selling off that were at previous highs, and, we're, and there's just a, a weight on the market. Would you agree with that, Al? Mm-hmm. We both decided to uh, take a swing on... The VIXY, the inverse ETF, after looking at the SPY and everything closing. And we got in right before after hours closed. Seconds before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was seconds before. But VIXY, of course, it's always downtrending because the SPY is always going up. But you can see the volume profile here. There's been a lot more volume in the VIXY since May, these past four months, than there has been the whole rest of the year. And we're seeing those bearish looking signals, I would call them, on the SPY and all those. And VIXY was right there, kind of at this bottom. I mean, just hit a few days ago, like 20, 2078, and then popped back up when we had that little dip. And you can see closing right there around 21. So we're we're both in here at a pretty low price on this. I I will be pretty surprised if the market doesn't turn around tomorrow. If we don't, if it doesn't start dumping, or if it doesn't gap down. I'm actually expecting a gap down in pre-market. I only went 10 shares so far. How how many shares did you go on the VIXY? Mm -hmm. Very small. I went uh, three shares, but I got a strategy that uh, I'm going to put into place. So I'm going to be adding to that position, but I want to make sure that I don't get dumped on too heavily. Uh, but it does, I mean, the spot overall just looks heavy. So why not, you know, go ahead and uh, get in with what looks like a lot of volume. You know, that volume has been coming in, coming in, and coming in. The biggest volume um, looks like a green bar right there. That's a buyer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely have to see what all this adds up to. But I do want to be in before that big drop because you're not gonna catch it once it starts. It's gonna it's probably gonna be too big to catch. Yeah, like I've been talking about for a long time now, because the spies continued to push up. I mean, you look at this on a weekly chart; it's just ridiculous. It, the 200 moving average is all the way down at 325. So you can see where those EMAs have spaced out, and you look back further on the chart, 
once the MAs get spaced out, it's correction time. And it has not had that correction time. Even the COVID drop still didn't really correct. The EMAs did not show a correction, really. Just a mm-hmm. small dip. So, I mean, this looks like a tree leaning over. Or like you're building a bridge that's going to come down to the other side of the pond. <laughs> it just doesn't look good. I don't think it has much left. And I was saying a couple of weeks ago, I thought the high of four. 50 that 450 area would probably be where we would see the big drop start Mm -hmm. so it did just hit a high of 448 which i didn't even notice until now and what (laughs) what i would be looking for for a signal here uh if you see on that that covid dip where that uh selling pressure or that selling volume in the if you zoom in just a little bit more and look at the volume counter see how that selling that selling ramped up I'm looking mm-hmm. for another ramp like that because that hasn't happened here. Uh, if you scroll all the way over to where we are now, yeah. that selling pressure hasn't come back in yet. So that's what I'll be looking for as a signal to kind of be like, okay, okay, we're getting some some sell off. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm I'm starting to build my position on the VIXY and how's going to be probably more conservative than I am, which is normal. What's deaf? <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, don't be surprised if you wake up and see the spy gap down tomorrow. I, I, the, it even shows right here the market closed on an imbalance of three hundred and thirty-three million to the sell side. So people were starting to dump towards the end of the day, and we saw that in some of the trades here. We'll see that in just a second. Uh, what'd you trade today, Hal? I traded C T E K. That was the first one. I took some stabs on. Yeah, this is um, one I traded as well. So that red candle right there, after I saw it decrease a couple of times, I jumped in here with 200 shares, and I was looking for it to go ahead and go. And it did explode, but, man, it just came down and just could not give me anything after that. So I went ahead and cut that position. I lost $0.05 cents on that 200 shares, so it wasn't bad. Yeah, I jumped in at 200, or 200 shares at 225 here. As this uh, started pushing back up mm-hmm. on this candle. And it looked like the same thing. I thought it was going to go. He made a nice little U shape there. I did have a chance to you know lock out 19 cents of profit right there if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. But it just looked like it was going to break over 240. You know, at least mm-hmm. test 250. And it never even got up to 250 and then just dumped. So yeah. I got stopped out on I got stopped out there too. And yeah. and you see the rest of the day selling off. Yeah, we, we checked it. I mean, today shelf registration stocks were moving. So C T E K <laughs> was a shelf registration, T Cat was a shelf registration. So I expected it and that's why I was cutting them quite quickly once they didn't go my way. Um, because I'm not I'm not holding because look at it, it's just a fade mm-hmm. <laughs> after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of TCAT, I think we both traded this one today. I missed a good entry on that little three bar downside because I was like, man, yep. this thing just double top. That little two reds was a double top. And I was expecting to see some more downwards motion, but it did not give it. It blew through that double yep. top. <laughs> yeah, you can see that's where I got in at. I, was, I waited for it to see if it was going to push up over it, and I got in at 756. As mm-hmm. soon as it started pushing over the tops of the bodies of those candles. And then I did lock out 20 at 866 uh, for some profit. And then I held the other 30 when it started coming back down here. And then as soon as it, you can see there, it cracked down to the VWAP and I just got out. Good job, good job. Yeah, so 30 shares of eight there. And it ended up being a $35 win. So nothing crazy, but a decent little scalp. Uh, on TCAT. So how did you play this one since you since you didn't jump so in I'm, three bars? Yeah, I missed I missed that and I was waiting for the consolidation. It started consolidating. It gave that little run up to the eight ninety eight. I didn't buy that one. Uh, I wanted to see a little bit more consolidation because that little breakout there was nothing. No. And so I was like, all right, well maybe it'll retest. So it came down to this little green candle here. After it finished dipping and it started coming back up, I was looking for it to break back over and and try to do another breakout there. But it did not do it, so I went ahead and cut that loss very quickly. I think that was an $0.08 loss. Oh, nice. No, no, no. That was a $0.15 loss with slippage. 
50 shares had to get out of there man and look like like you use vwap to get out that's what i do because uh, there's trouble there's trouble <laughs> coming <laughs> Yeah, I, it wasn't even that, you know, I, I, I left VWAP in here from where we were looking last night uh, at all those different stocks, so I just left it on this morning. Good I haven't job, traded, good job. I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't traded with it in a long time, but I'm just leaving it on. I'm like, well, why not? I'm going to yeah. probably change it a different color because it is confusing me with the 10-day adaptive. It'll save your life. Yeah, <laughs> but then TCAT, same thing, mm -hmm. selling off by the end of the day. Yep, shelf registration, old ugly shelf in there. Yep. Man, I locked out my express swing. It, I didn't catch the top up here. Uh, it started coming back down, and that's when I started noticing the market was dropping and looking weird, and everything was volume, all that. Everything kind of looked weird, so I just got out there and after hours locking it in. So I got in 40 shares at 658, selling the 40 shares at 727. Not a huge win, about twenty eight dollars. Yeah, it was a slow moving swing, and I planned on holding it for longer because I liked the daily chart. But like I said, once I saw the spy and everything, I just cut all my swing trades. Same thing on DATS. I went ahead and took out the last profit of it. It was looking very good, but I wasn't watching it during all this time. Same the same time I noticed everything you can see it it'd actually give back a lot so i went ahead and got out tw that last 20 of it at six so that yeah. ended up being a pretty decent swing it was a it was about a hundred dollar win something like that see my buy order was way back here <laughs> yeah boy 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 holding that thing forever but it didn't have a shelf so you were in good position yeah yeah it did pretty good and then vivos just ate me up again I swung it yesterday thinking it was going to try to bounce, and it held up. Uh, you know, just had a little downtrend, and if it could have just broke that triangle, it could have climbed, but instead it dumped out of the triangle. So mm -hmm. losing, an losing another 79 there. <laughs> Vivo, so I'm just Wait, wait, wait. You swung 110 of that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was looking for more of a move. Like I said, I looked into this one and everything, and I still think at some point it's going to pop, but the way the market was today, uh, pretty much against everything. Uh, you swung against up. the red day. I, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I did, I but it you. did eventually come back up. You can see it's back up to 561 here in after hours. So that's what I'm saying. It, you know, I might have mistimed the swing. I might have should have waited for today when it hit this bottom of 490 or something and then swung it. I'd be up in profit right now. So bad timing of my swing. Yeah. Red on the day. Don't swing against the shorts when they're already winning. They got the sledgehammer. You got the fork. <laughs> sledgehammer and the fork. So I am out of all swing trades now besides the VIXY and from now on until the market looks like it's going in a specific direction I am only day trading and swinging the VIXY I'm not going to take any other swing trades unless I see any setups that are just like okay that could run against the market so you have any more trades today or is that it for you yeah, I took uh, some small ones in after out, after hours on CLRO, but they just, you know, CL. it just didn't give me what I was looking for. So I went ahead and jumped out of there. Uh, took another $10, $10 loss there. Uh, it started to dip down. It, look, it popped back up as well. So right in there is where I got in. But it dipped down, and I went ahead and jumped out. Uh, $0.08 cent loss on 150 shares. But it did pop back up there, so whatever. I did not want to hold this one into the uh, tomorrow because it does have a shelf <laughs> registration, of course. Yeah. Um, shelf registrations were the only thing that was moving today, and I am not holding that overnight. But yeah, I'm I'm looking for I'm looking to get into the swing game as well, but I just haven't seen anything to be swinging. Yeah, there's not been much other than uh, you know the EXPR and DATS that has been decent swings that I've seen. A lot of times though. I would rather swing something a little bit more safer than these small cap low floats, but 
you can get some very interesting pops on them. You, it's better, though, not to buy when they've ran. It's better to buy them when they're super low. Like you can see right here on CLRO, it's, it mm -hmm. hit a low a year, $1.56. And if you'd have swung it, mm -hmm. you could have got all the way up to four twenty eight. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what you want to look for is for them to have a big dip. But you don't want to, like, you definitely don't want to look at any swing trades like uh, BXRX because this thing has just been downtrending forever. You know, maybe, you know, you take a shot at the low here and it pops up some like it did today to 88 cents. But I don't like swinging things that are in a constant downtrend. So I liked Express. It was an uptrend. DATS, same thing, uptrend. So that's pretty much it. Slow market. Took some trades, locked in some swing trades. And you see the SPY. Good, good strong argument for a pullback or correction coming. We'll see how it all plays out. But we'll be back tomorrow for some more live stream trading on both channels if you haven't yet. Go check out Hal's channel, H and H Trader. How are you ready for in the morning for the pre-market show? Oh yeah! Oh yes! All right. So appreciate everybody joining us as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.